Hello, how are you doing? Honestly, I am a bit tired today. I stayed up late last night, and I stayed up late last night because of this novel, The Birthday Party by Laurent Monvignier, and it has been a while since I had that reader's thing, you know, that compulsive sense of I cannot go to sleep tonight until I finish this book. I need to find out what happens. Uh, it definitely could be characterized as a thriller because its sense of danger and tension gradually escalates over the course of the book until it reaches a feverish pitch. However, it's structured in an interesting way with elaborate detail and intricate sentences which fully account for the impressions and thoughts and memories of its characters. This creates a unique, in-depth understanding of their points of view. The story is set in a hamlet in the French countryside where Patrice is preparing for his wife Marion's 40th birthday party. Also, their daughter Ida is drawing pictures uh, to give to her mother as a present, and she is overseen by their older neighbor Christine, who is a slightly eccentric artist. And this hamlet is tiny. There is only three houses in this hamlet. Uh, one of them is unoccupied, so there is this family alongside this artist neighbor. Although this setting seems peaceful and idyllic, ominous uncertainties linger, especially as Christine receives anonymous threatening letters, and just as the party is about to kick off, uh, it is crashed by sinister uninvited guests. What follows is a slow-building tale which teasingly reveals the secrets and motives of all of these characters, and the tightly wound plot cautiously unravels until the truth is laid mercilessly bare. Now, let me warn you, this is a novel that requires some patience at first because its pace initially feels so languid, but it becomes increasingly compelling as all of the elements which consume the moment-to-moment -moment lives of these characters reveal how people are overwhelmingly preoccupied with thoughts of the past and projections of the future. At least, this is the case until something disrupts the self-designated line on which they walk through the world. Then they become firmly rooted in the present. The author describes this in the novel as the surprise giving way to a mute shock so strong that all reality finally dissolves into a sensation of brutal hyperrealism. Through the domestic drama and tense standoff in this story, Mauvignier poignantly shows the perilous uncertainties in life. These persist no matter how firmly people believe in the narratives they write for themselves, and it shows the intense clash that occurs when these narratives are disrupted. The precariousness of self-invention is reflected in Christine's method of painting, and he writes, you can layer over your life to call it into being, superimpose coats of realities, different lives so that at last only one is visible, nourished by the previous ones and surpassing all of them. The conflict which occurs between these characters reveals how their sense of being is violently torn apart when it infringes upon the liberty of others. In particular, it exposes how a certain type of hyper-masculinity is ruthless in its determination to dominate and control. It's clever how the author builds a sense of mystery surrounding the characters and their motives, and that is what really kept me gripped reading this book. Many times when I began to feel slightly wary of the convoluted tangle of this situation, I was drawn back into wondering what is really going on here and what is going to happen. Mauvignier certainly keeps the reader guessing, and I I can see how some might feel that information is being artificially withheld for the sake of suspense. But I think as well as building a sense of tension, 
The author is reflecting the reality of our daily existence and our relationship with time. In fact, life begins to feel in this book like blocks of time which are movable pieces. The present is often overlaid with a future which might never materialize, and frequently it doesn't as events occur and the character's plans must be rewritten. The novel is paced to reflect this, where experiences move quite slowly until lots of surprising things suddenly happen all at once. Interestingly, at one point, Mauvignier adopts a cinematic style of language uh, to describe how now what happens goes very quickly, and it's as though only a very long, slow-motion shot can make it visible. Action sequences are notoriously difficult to present in novels, but I think this story masterfully conveys events which occur quickly. Rather than trying to imitate the visual impact of film, Mauvignier shows in his text how cinema reflects the heart-stopping moment when something calamitous occurs in an instant. It takes a certain style of presentation to show how this decisive moment will change things forever. So this novel could be read simply for its suspense, though I can understand how some readers' patience is tested. However, I think the overriding message of this book makes more of an impact than any pot boiler because of the very distinctive style of Mauvignier's writing. It's like Virginia Woolf meets Patricia Highsmith. Though the setting is provincial and it presents only a tiny community, I think it does speak to some of the current concerns of the wider world. It reveals the dangers of group mentalities and incel-like misogynistic frames of mind. Also, about halfway through through the book, I felt completely hooked, and I knew I had to finish it, even if it meant I was going to lose some sleep, and I did. <laughs> but uh, this novel is also long-listed for this year's International Booker Prize, um, so I've also gone to the Booker Prize website where the judges have given comments about all of the books uh, that they have nominated. Uh, so I'm going to read out the, the part about the birthday party, and I'll put a link to this below if you want to see the judges' comments about all of the books that they've listed. Uh, so they say, This impressive and fascinating book reconciles two primal feelings, empathy and dread. It is a very scary book, rooted in the traditions of horror. It is as scary as when we listened to stories about ogres and wolves as children. The writing is formidable. The slow rhythm of the sentences creates tension as much as the situation itself. Mauvignier also describes brilliantly an abandoned rural France where there is a sense of marginalization and humiliation. And yeah, I, I think um, that is a great way to characterize um, this novel, and they really have it spot on, and um, they've pointed out things that I haven't really thought about, and I particularly like the way they describe that as the, the slow rhythm of the sentences creating tension as much as the situation itself. That is absolutely what this novel does. Um, so I'd be really curious to know, have you read this book? Um, what do you think about it? Do you agree with me? And do you agree with the judges? Or do you disagree? Um, were you not able to finish this book? I, I know a number of people have like abandoned it after reading a certain amount of pages. Um, but I, I would just in gently encourage you uh, to continue reading on, and hopefully you'll be as gripped by the, the story as I was, and also have found it as meaningful as I have, like continuing to think about it and reflect about it. And I think it's one of those novels that's going to continue to leave an impression on me and make me think about it, you know, more than any other kind of, of thriller. Uh, but yeah, thank you for watching, and thank you for watching me uh, discuss this book. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comments uh, if you have read it or are keen on reading it, or if you're reading any other books from The Lawn List, and I will speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.